But, so it has to do with the issue of incremental development. I kind of alluded to it briefly, but in a, in a more fine-grained level, um, you know, building building a model off and trying running it, seeing what, what's going on, and then add a bit of mechanism, try running it, see what's going on. Even though it's very incomplete, try running it. And and then, you know, if, if there is a problem, <clears throat> you'll spot it sooner. But often, you learn a little bit. But this is even more important, more important for the projects as a whole. And one of the surest ways a project can go awry, one of the surest ways that things can go out of kilter with it, and it can it can end up not being as productive is if you have a big great you know wonderful vision and you say okay two years from now we're going to have a model like that and we're going to work towards that model we're going to work towards it and you know we're we're, we're basically going to learn from it two years from now and and you start working towards it building up all these complex mechanisms managing this managing that getting the data for this getting in the the request for that, seeking with stakeholders, and those two years will pass really quick. And and uh, if you're extremely lucky, at the end of the two years, you'll have that model. Um, but you still won't have gained what you could have. The alternative is, uh, and often you won't have that model in hand. It will, it won't have come together as planned. You'll discover mistakes in your thinking um, late in the game. What's much more effective is if you can build a model all along the way where you're rolling out things that are, as, just as Kurt said, sort of seen as probably the next most important thing to include. You recognize the model's not yet as complete as it probably ever will be, but you put in something, and the point is when you do that, you gain a couple benefits. Number one, if you've made a mistake, you know about it sooner. That's at kind of the implementation level. But more than that, um, often including that thing, you see some new dynamics. You see something new happening that you didn't see before because you've incorporated X or Y. You've incorporated preferences. You've incorporated the impact of distance on people's food seeking or you've incorporated you know, the impact of a person's background on their decision making or whatever it is. Um, so you, you see some new dynamics coming from it and you know where that dynamics comes from. If you wait two years and you have the big great model even if you're lucky and you actually have it, you see dynamics, you don't know where they're coming from. Is it from this? Is it from that? It's going to take you a long time of experimentation at best to pin down where does this dynamics come from, where does that one, what's the primary driver for this other thing. If you build the model up along the way, often you see patterns emerging when you first incorporate this feature, that's when you see this pattern come about. And you learn, oh, that pattern's probably associated with that feature in a way it would have taken you a long time to tease out from that final model. Um, another thing you get, which is probably even more important, is learning. You learn all along the way things that you never would have anticipated ahead of time. So maybe two years from now, you have a big, great, wonderful model, but it's a very different model than you would have had if you just sat back and thought about it and decided you know, to build it ahead of, with certain features ahead of time. What this model that you actually get in hand from this incremental development gives you is it gives you a model that's been informed by the learning all along the way and by the refinements of your thinking all along the way. You, you've learned, you know, you've learned, oh wow, this really interesting behavior can just come from these two things interacting that you wouldn't have anticipated. And that means, well, maybe we don't need to go this direction. Let's, you know, maybe our first few papers could just be about that area. And instead of those papers being produced two and a half years from now, they're produced half a year from now. And, you know, you, you start to learn along the way, and that really informs your understanding about what's important and what's needed. So, so incremental development gives you incremental learning. It gives you the ability to spot problems but also learn where behavior comes from and learn what is most important in this model. It will often radically shape, reshape sort of the trajectory you would have thought likely by virtue of learning along the way. Finally, for stakeholders who you're involved with, it's a lot more motivating if you can show them things along the way. If you don't just have to say, well, you know, two years from now we'll have this great model for you. But if you can show them steps along the way, even if it's modest, even if it's incomplete, they'll often get excited. And critically, critically, 
that's often where their insights come in. It's by observing these partial models and it will stimulate a few neurons to fire that otherwise wouldn't. And I'll say, you know, I forgot to tell you, but you know, I have this observation about the system, or I've seen this before. You know, there's something, there's something that doesn't jog about this, the way we've captured this. And they actually won't see it unless it's in front of them running. So getting things in front of the stakeholder sooner is another big gain that you secure from, from incremental modeling and, and raising confidence and conviction on their part that this is going to gain, gain something for them. So if you want to see a useful model that actually gets used, delivering it incrementally will often get you much further down that path than if you had thought about it ahead of time. So um, I have lectures on this, which you know I could refer people to if you're interested in learning more. But it's a very um, it's a very important point, and I'm grateful for um, Kurt for for uh, elevating it in that conversation.